So this video is going to be an introduction to biostatistics, which is a part of community medicine or a major topic of community medicine. So what exactly is biostatistics? Here's the thing. The word biostatistics has two parts, bio and statistics. What statistics? Okay, we know this much that statistics is a part of mathematics. The whole reason you came to MPBS was so that you can finally get rid of maths. But guess what? Maths has come back to haunt you. Or has it? See, by statistics itself is not a difficult topic. But the difficulty comes in how to exactly start it. Because we don't, most of us, we don't really know where to begin the topic of biostatistics or even the topic of community medicine. However, in this particular video, I'm going to teach you biostatistics from the very basics. Okay, so what's statistics? See, in this universe or in this world, there are lots and lots and lots of data. Your skin color is a data. Your height is a data. The number of eyes you have is a data. Your heartbeat rate is a data. Your breathing rate is a data. The amount of cement used in building your home is a data. The number of stories in your home is a data. The number of buildings in the town is a data. The number of trees in a park is a data. The number of birds found in a tree in that park is a data. There are lots and lots of data everywhere. But this does not mean that these data, they convey anything useful. See, statistics is the process of converting useless data into useful information that can convey some legit meaning from which you can conclude something. However, this process involves multiple steps, which you'll come to know soon enough. What's bio? Bio means biology. So by statistics, statistics and bio. Bio means biology and medical science is a part of biology. So the statistics which is used under the field of biology or medical science is biostatistics. Let me show you a very good example. Let's suppose this right here is a health post. This health post has been visited by five people. Ram, Roke, Gullu, Tullu, Siam. These five people have given their blood sample to test for sugar level fasting. What sugar level fasting? Sugar level fasting is nothing but your sugar level or glucose level of your blood, which is taken in an empty stomach. What do I mean? So after you wake up, before you have had your breakfast, that is before you have broken your fast, in an empty stomach, you give away your blood or give a blood sample and the glucose level that is detected in that blood sample, blood sample given during empty stomach in that blood sample is sugar level fasting. Uh, since you have not had anything, the glucose level is comparatively low since you have not had any carbohydrate. Obviously, sugar level fasting is going to come out to be less than normal sugar level. But that's not our concern right now. Our concern is by statistics. So five people visited and their ages were 17, 20, 39, 19, 40. And the result came back. After the result came back, we saw that all these five people had five different sugar level fasting. Someone had 100, someone had 120, the other had 140, the other had 300, and the other had 200. What we have here is a mess because this gives us no information at all. Basically, we have collected data. At least we have done that much. So the first step is collection of data. So we have collected data, but this data makes no sense at all because it is a bunch of mess. What we do now is analyze this data. So step two is analyzing. So analyzation, we analyze this data and finally present this data presentation, present this data presentation. And the type of presentation that I have used here is tabular presentation because a table has been used. That's it. So a table has been used. And we have presented this useless, uh, no, meaningless data. 
from this presentation something makes actually makes sense now we know the name of the people the age of those people and the sugar fasting level of those people for example ram of age 17 has sugar level fasting 100 roke of age 40 has sugar level fasting 120 gullu of age 39 has sugar level fasting 300 tullu of age 19 has sugar level fasting 400 and sam of age 20 has sugar level fasting 140 now all of this makes sense since they make sense, we can finally use that information to conclude something. From this particular information, what can we conclude? We can infer or conclude that Ram has a normal sugar level fasting. Roke has a normal sugar level fasting. However, Gullu is diabetic. And so is Tullu. And Sam has a normal sugar level fasting. So all these steps, they come under statistics. Collection of data, analyzing the collection of data, presenting that data, and finally using the information from the, that presentation to conclude or infer something. Collection, analyzation, presentation, and inference or conclusion. Now let's look at the scopes of biostatistics. First, so Ram has sugar level fasting 100, and Roke has sugar level fasting 120. There's a difference of 20 between the sugar level fasting of Ram and Roke. That is, there is variation in the sugar level fasting of Ram and Roke. Within human species, there's variation everywhere. Even within your family, your height is not same as that the height of the other family members. Even within your hand, the five fingers of your hand are different from one another. The heartbeat rate of person A may not be same as the heartbeat rate of person B. The breathing rate of person A may not be the same as breathing rate of person B. The color of the iris of person A may not be the same as the color of iris of person B. The skin color of person A may not be the same as skin color of person B. The hairstyle of person A may not be the same as hairstyle of person B. There's variation everywhere. And in order to understand this variation, you need biostatistics. So that's the first scope of biostatistics, and that is to understand variation. Number two, Ram sugar level fasting 100, Roke sugar level fasting 120. The sugar level fasting of Roke is 20 more than Ram. Does this mean that Roke is diabetic and Ram is healthy? Or does it mean that both of them are diabetic? Or does it mean that none of them are diabetic? What, who exactly is diabetic here and who is healthy? How do we know that? We know that with the help of a certain number above which people are diabetic and below which people are healthy. And that particular number is the cutoff. And how exactly do we know this cutoff? We are able to figure out the cutoff with the help of biostatistics. Number three, biostatistics is used to present data. And it is with the help of proper presentation of data, we are able to conclude many things and gain a lot of information. Let's look at this graph. This graph presents some data. In this graph, the x-axis uh, contains the year and the y-axis contains number of death due to smallpox. As you can see, before 1980, the deaths due to smallpox was very high. But as time passes, it, it decreases, it keeps on decreasing, keeps on decreases, and decreasing and after 1980, there is no case of smallpox at all. This shows the success of vaccination. As the vaccine against smallpox developed over time, the number of deaths due to smallpox also decreased to a point that smallpox is finally eradicated, which is a really, really good thing. It's a huge achievement in the field of medical science and number four inference or conclusion what do we conclude from this graph what do we conclude from this proper presentation of data that has been shown with the help of this graph we conclude that vaccination actually works because it was due to the success of vaccination against smallpox that smallpox was finally eradicated